For a lot of situations, we, uh, we talk mathematics, and we have a particular set of vocabulary that we use that can translate into math operations, like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Some common vocabulary words that are used when we're dealing with math operations are talking about the answer to a problem is called something. So we have specific terms that mathematically mean an answer to a specific type of problem. So for example, um, an answer to an addition problem is called a sum. An answer to a subtraction problem is called a difference. An answer to a multiplication problem is called a product, and an answer to a division problem is called a quotient. When we're dealing, so for example, we could say the sum of 5 and 12 is 17, because the sum of 5 and 12 means we're doing 5 and adding 12 we're doing an addition getting an answer and the answer that we get is 17 so we can use uh, the these specific terminologies to indicate a particular type of of, of problem as we head forward um, these are the very common mathematical ones and, and you'll see things like the quotient uh, maybe you'll have the quotient of a number and six. Well, in this case, we see the word quotient, which means we're going to have a division, and we want to divide a number and six. So we have some number divided by six. So this translates into this phrase or mathematical operation. Now, it's not very practical or fast to write number all the time, and so when we have some unknown value that we want to represent, in algebra, we use what's called a variable. And this is essentially some symbol, and we almost always in this course are going to be using a letter to represent this. But we're using a symbol or a letter to represent an unknown quantity. Your most common variables that you'll see used are going to be x, um, or n for a number. So like for example here, a number divided by 6, I could write as n divided by 6. Okay, so these are our real formal mathematical terms, but we don't use these words very often in our everyday language. So what I'd like to kind of put together here is a chart of some commonly used phrases that can indicate a specific type of math operation. Um, let's go ahead and kind of make a chart here. If we want to do adding, so say for example, we want to do a plus b, so two variables here, we have a variety of different words that we can use. Um, we could use the word plus, we could use the word sum, like we have up here, the sum of a and b. We could use the word instead of plus or increasing, so A increased by B. Or we could even see B more than A. Which says that we're starting with A and then we're doing B more than that, so we're adding to that. Sometimes you'll see the word total, the total of A and B. And sometimes you'll see something like B added to A. And in all of these cases, what we're doing is we're looking at an addition for any of these terms. So we're kind of getting a way that we can decode or translate 
word phrases into a mathematical phrase. All right, so that's addition. Let's take a look at some sub subtraction examples. So if we want to do a minus B, for example, we can use the word minus. We can use the word difference, because that means the answer to the subtraction problem. So the difference of or between A and B. We can use A decreased by B. which means we're starting with A and then subtracting B from that. Or we can say B less than A. Or B subtracted from A. Now, when we're dealing with subtraction, it's really important to notice that um, the order that our numbers are written in here is super, super important for us to pay attention to. So here's my little warning and reminder to pay attention to the order of how things are written. If, for example, we had five minus two, we could end up with three as a solution. But if we do two minus five, right, if we think of this as adding the opposite, I end up with two and negative five, which is a negative three. So when we're doing subtraction, it really matters if you write the five first or the two first, because you'll get a completely different answer. With addition, we really don't have to worry about that so much because it has what's called the commutative property, which says if you add things one way, it's the same as if you add things in the other order. But with subtraction, we don't have that specific luxury. So a couple of the things that I really want you to pay attention to as you're looking at translations are these words like less than or subtracted from. If you're doing B less than A, it means you're starting with A and then you're taking B away from that. If B is subtracted from A, then you're starting with A and taking B away from that. So in these particular instances, it's important that you switch the order of the terms to get the direction that you actually would like for that. All right, so there is our subtraction terms. Let's take a look at a couple of others. Uh, multiplication is another common value or operation that we have. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can write multiplication. Uh, sometimes you'll see things written with a dot in between them to indicate. Uh, sometimes you've seen in the past a little times or even an asterisk written beside it. We really don't like to use the X to represent times um, very much because it looks like an X that's a variable. So you really need to be careful with that. The asterisk is real common symbol for multiplication when you're dealing with typing things on a computer, um, but you don't usually see that written out when you're looking at papers. Uh, so these are used, but we'd like to kind of start moving away from those symbols. That's the worst asterisk as ever, something like that. Um, other things that we can do, sometimes you'll see a number that's written outside of parentheses. If there's no operation between the number and the parentheses, it's always implied to be multiplication. Or sometimes you'll just see two parentheses next to each other like this. So these are all different ways that you can write multiplication. Again, use the, start using these, this one, these two here less. These other ones are much more common and you should get much more comfortable in using those as part of our course. Um, okay, so what are some words that imply multiplication? We use the word times a lot. We can use the word multiplied by. We can use the word the product of, right, our answer to a multiplication problem. Um, and then we have a few words that indicate a specific multiplication. So for example, if you see something like the word twice, that is an indication that you're gonna do two times whatever your number is. 
If you see something like the word triple, you would do three times your number. Okay, so all of those are going to be things that you want to indicate some sort of a multiplication process with. Uh, our last major mathematical operation that we're dealing with is division. Um, and division is like subtraction in that um, the order that we do things in makes a huge difference. With multiplication, we have that same commutative property that we had with addition. Um, three, two times three is six. Three times two is also six. The order that we write those in doesn't matter. But with division, if we had 12 divided by six, you get two. But if you turn that around and do six divided by 12, we end up getting a half or 0 0.5. So the order, again, be especially careful when you're dealing with division processes. When we write division, um, we can use our traditional division symbol. When we're dealing with computer type, you'll often see a slash used to represent division. Um, and probably the most common form of division that you'll see is division written as a fraction, where you have the top number divided by the bottom number. And a fraction bar is another symbol and way that we can represent division. Um, some words that we can use to indicate division going on, we can have, of course, A divided by B. Uh, the quotient of A and B. The ratio of A and B. Ratio is also an indication of division. Um, but if you say this as B divided into A, what this is saying is you're starting with A and you're dividing B by it. So this is um, another one of those where you need to switch the order of the terms like we had up um, with subtraction. Um, like there are some problems that indicate a very specific division, like twice would mean you multiply by two, using a word like half of A would indicate that you're going to do A divided by two. And you can get things from there. So those are all some key vocabulary words that you can use, and this can kind of be a good reference chart for you um, to go back and refer to this. And this is also available in the, in the readings and text. Um, online as well. Another key word that we see all of the time, and I kind of brought that up here, if we slide back up here to our sum of 5 and 12 is 17, this word is becomes another really important mathematical term. And the word is indicates, it's a, what our key word to indicate equals. So for a lot of expressions, if it just says you're doing a math operation, that's just an expression. For it to be an equation, it needs an equal sign, and your statement would have to have some sort of statement of equality, that something is the same as something else. So you can see the word is, you can see the word same, you could see, of course, the word equals, and all of those are indications that you would use the equal symbol as part of your translation into English.